Okay, so let's get started. This is the third installment we're doing. The first stream, what we did is set up a user interface to allow players to sign up and register for PlayFab using an email address and password, and then they can log in with those two details. The following stream from that, we then logged in using those credentials. We had a spawner in our level, and we made that spawner retrieve how many enemies it should spawn from the PlayFab server. But we really want to focus on how we can make the PlayFab stuff that we've looked at already, how can we make that more accessible for game jams? And you can kind of get it done pretty cheaply using PlayFab without having to pay anything. So a lot of the kind of heavy lifting has been done for you. And we're going to utilize more of that today by having a look at how can we log into PlayFab then without the user having to sign up. The good news is it's pretty straightforward and you could use this, what we're going to learn today, you could use this in any project really. So I've got myself open the project that we did last time. And just to remind ourselves, as I said, we, we made it so that it would give you a login screen. But generally speaking, you would log in, it would then send a message to the, the PlayFab API saying, hey, here's the user details of someone who's trying to log in. And then it would authenticate it and send a message back saying, yeah, that is fine. And once we get that message back, we load the next level. So instead of having this sign up process, we're going to go straight to just having an account made automatically for the player, make a random ID for them, and then we will just check, do they already have an account? Let's have a look exactly what we're going to do then. So let me go ahead and open the user interface quickly, just so we can have a nice refresh and we know exactly where we are. So if I go to the sign up widget here, this was put onto our main widget, which is our PlayFab login widget, I think. We effectively made each of those buttons call a function. So you can see it gets our game instance, casts it to our custom PlayFab game instance that we made, and then it calls the sign up function. So I'm going to make my own kind of custom event, try to log in user. And what we'll do is right at the start of the game, we can go ahead and call that. So event init happens, it's kind of like you begin play almost of the game instance. You can think of it like that at least. And we're going to go ahead and call that auto login user like that. Over here, we have our set playfab settings. So if I open this up, there's that same code. Let's go back to our playfab game instance. We've got this function called auto login user, and we're going to start actually doing something with this. The name of the function that we're calling within the playfab API is something called login with custom ID. So let's move this bit up nice and clear away from the rest because we don't really need to concern ourselves with the rest for now. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to think about the situation. Is it the first time they're logging in or not? Let's start with creating a save game for them, shall we? So it's create save game object. So let's go ahead, let's go to our content explorer and I'm going to go ahead and create a new blueprint. And this time we're going to try and derive it from the save game class. I'm going to open that up and this is where we can add anything we want to save in our save game. I'm going to add myself a string. We can add a display name as well. Let's do that now. We'll end up coming back to do that later anyway. So, and then what we need to do is to choose that save game class that we just made as our save game class. So you can just set data as simple as this, set user ID. So let's just do set display name. There it comes, plug that in. And our display name is going to be no name McGee. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save that and that will create that save file for us. So this is good so far. There's a couple of things that we need to address and let's have a talk about those in just a second. So the two things that we need to address before we really dig into this login with custom ID part are the following. First off, we used a random number here, right? That's problem number one. Remember, as I said, this needs to be a unique, different number. At the moment, we're creating a save game no matter what. We want to check, do they already have a save game? Because if they do, we're going to load from it. So let's deal with those two problems. We want to use a random ID for the player. We're just going to right click and we want to create a GUID, I'm going to call them, okay? Rather than saying GUID all the time. And there we go. It will just create one for us. We're going to store it as a string. Okay, so that was the first of our problems. So let's go ahead and think about how can we manage the case if they've already logged in once. There's a function in here called load game. So let's go ahead and type in load game. So let's go ahead, we'll control drag these out and then we'll plug these in. If the save game exists, we're going to load from it. If not, we're going to go ahead and create the save game. So this section down here is going to be create a new save game. That's, uh, that's our logic thus far. So we're going to now think about how we want this next bit to work where we actually log in the player. So the first thing you're going to do is handle this on failure. And now we need to do our on success. 
So at this point, we've used it, we've saved a slot, but we're also, I think it's gonna be useful for us to cache this so we can use it later on. So if we promote it to a variable and we'll connect these wires in here, great. We have now cached this and then we wanna access uh, the, what we called our custom ID was the user ID, right? So let's go ahead and handle the on login with custom ID success. Drag off of this and we can go ahead and break this down. So let's go ahead, uh, we're gonna promote this to a variable, drag this across. We've got our PlayFab ID, so we're gonna go ahead and branch off of this. Effectively, what we can do is just think, okay, well, now that we've updated the name, let's carry on. And what we're gonna do as our final step then is just to go ahead, we're gonna get the account info for the user who's just signed in now. So let's go ahead and get this done then on screen, shall we? Like so, and we want this to meet up with it. Then we're gonna follow the same suit as always, our on failure, which is gonna create an event here. Create an event, we're gonna set it to be our on fail event. So we're gonna just do one thing then to finish, which is just amalgamate or collect that information so that we can print it out to the screen to see what, what's actually happening. The next one we wanna probably display would be the display name. So there we go. Okay, so we've got this. I should probably tidy this up a little bit just so the, uh, like put some spacing in. And then we'll print that to the screen and then we're done. So before we run it, let's go and have a, a look at our account, shall we? I'm gonna go to the level blueprint and I'm gonna just get rid of this bit. Okay, so hopefully now when I press play, we're not gonna see that much. I give you that heads up. And we can check locally to see if the save file was made. So let's go ahead and do that. Excellent. So this is what we got out of it. So there we go. We've got this defaulto. We actually got to this stage without the user having to even know that it happened. I literally just pressed play in my game. If we go to my game, I'm just in a level. You know, they haven't got a clue what, what was going on once I've done that. So uh, if I was to go into the folder where my project is, you can now see this, this file called playfab login save. Let's go and see what happens. Let's do a little change so we know which branch is kind of coming into. And also I'm interested in knowing what this GUID is as well. This is when we make an, a, a new, when we have to create a new save file, sorry. We're gonna print this out just so we're aware of it. So let me just change this to an append quickly so it's a little bit cleaner for us. We'll take the user ID. We're just gonna say new uh, save user ID equals and then it'll print that out for us. So let's hook these up. I know it's a little bit messy now but let's not rearrange everything. I'm sure you can work out what I've done there. It's not too much of a mess. If anything, it's mildly symmetrical, which is pleasing. We've gone ahead and done that, and then we'll do it up here as well. Let's think, what's gonna happen if I press play again now? What should happen is it should go ahead and say, hey, they do have a save file, and so it should load the save file, and it should print the user ID, and then it will log in, and it will print out the summary of all the information. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see I've logged in and it's got the exact same information again. My name is Defaulto, my PlayFab ID is the same, my login ID, uh, my player ID is the same. Let's uh, have a look at where this information shows on PlayFab then. So let me open up this Defaulto account. This gives us information about those. And then if I was to scroll down to the bottom, so on the bottom of this section, this is where we've got our master player account information. So this is your that custom ID that we used to create an account with. But you'll notice that is different to their player ID. The final thing, I've alluded to it once or twice already, but just to, to point out, you can link accounts. This is that general flow that we wanted to go through then. Hopefully, we've learned something new today, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we've gone ahead then, and we've learned how we can create a really kind of simple system for your players to log into PlayFab without them knowing about it. And one of our main incentives to do this was to reduce the hassle and the fuss for players. And that's gonna be a really important for us if we're trying to get players to play our game rather than quit our game. But yeah, hopefully it's been good. So we are done for the day.